making some chocolate chip scones. Most people, when they make scones, or the true believers in how to make scones, is you don't use an electric mixer because it adds too much warmth. But if you're careful, you can do it in a mixer. I have four cups of flour and two teaspoons of salt in here. I have two tablespoons of baking powder and a quarter of a cup of sugar. Now, what's going to give it, I'm going to think of mix this up on the mixer a little bit. My oven is getting ready. You can hear the sound. Just mixing to combine. And here I have three sticks, three quarters of a pound of cold butter cut into cubes. No one said this wasn't fattening. All right, we're going to add the butter. Try to make sure it's as cold as you possibly can get it. And now you just want to do it until you get large, like large peas. You don't want to over mix this. You don't want the butter to be that you can't see it. You want to see the butter. A few more seconds. Okay. Now in another bowl, I have four eggs and one cup of cold, heavy cream. Add those together. Mix them up well. Now we're going to add this to our dry ingredients just until they start to come together. We'll finish it off on the table later. Again, we don't want to overdo this. I take some extra flour. Put some on the board. Get rid of this mixture. We don't need that anymore. And take all the dough off. Still feel how wet and sticky it is. I think I need a spatula. And you can still see there's still some flour in there. That's okay because we're going to work it in. The reason you want to do this fast is you don't want to get it warm. The warmth of your hands will melt the butter and you don't want to do that. I forgot the chocolate chips, so I'll work them in now. It's a cup of chocolate chips, minis. Or you can do shaved chocolate if you want. Or if you don't want to do chocolate chip, you can do um, dried cranberries, dried cherries, dried blueberries. You could do fresh blueberries in here. Um, when you start using too juicy of a fresh fruit, however, it will be, uh, get a little mushy. That is sti very sticky, but that's a good sign. And now, we take our rolling pin and just want to roll it out to about three quarters of an inch thick. Even though I forgot to put the chocolate bits in in the mixer, they blended in pretty well. And now I have a baking sheet with parchment on it. You can use a greased baking sheet. You can use a Silpat baking sheet if that's what you have. If you don't have parchment. Okay. 
you can still see chunks of butter in here. That's exactly what you want to see. There's chunks of butter in there because the butter, when it gets in the oven, it's going to start melting and it's just going to provide a lift. Now I have a two and three quarter inch round cutter. I'm going to cut my scones. And then you also want to have prepared an egg wash, which is nothing more than an egg beaten with a little bit of water or milk. And then some coarse, I'm using coarse sanding sugar. It's a little thicker than regular sugar. If you don't have it, you can use regular sugar. Again, it's up to you and what you happen to have. But if you're going to do a lot of baking, you really want to invest in some of these nicer ingredients. You'll find the results are worth it. And my oven is heating to 400 degrees. Now, the rest of these, you can see there's going to be a lot of scraps left over. If you're very careful, you can put them together again and roll them out and re-cut them. But you don't ever want to do it a third time. That would be, it just won't work out very nicely. I will continue to get these on my sheet. There we go. Definitely going to have more than enough for one sheet, so I'm going to end up having to take a little break and go get another sheet. Twelve on this sheet. I have my beaten egg with a little bit of water and a brush. I'll brush the chops lightly. This will help them glisten. My oven is on 400 degrees, as I mentioned earlier. These are going to bake for about 20, 25 minutes. They'll puff up and then get the coffee ready. Okay. Like I said, dried fruit would be good in this. I, I happen to like these particularly with cranberries. And if you're going to do it with cranberries, when you're mixing up the flour, um, I would suggest you zest in some orange zest for a little added flavor. And then here we go with the coarse sugar. Again, I could use some vanilla sugar on this too, but I'm just using plain coarse sugar. This is the same kind you would use in um, cookie decorating. It comes in different colors and things. I suppose if you wanted to with the various holidays, if you wanted to make scones, <clears throat> you can make them different colors. Okay, off to the oven. I've taken the scones out of the oven and I've put them on a cooling rack. And now we're just going to let them sit on the cooling rack for about five or ten minutes because they're just a little bit too hot. You like them warm, but not too hot. And then we're going to make a nice cup of tea and have a nice flaky scone. 